What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Um, I had a lot of uh, video stuff I've been uh, recording and uh, filming. Just haven't been able to put it up. I had a trip I took with Bishop to back to Dave and Buster's and then, excuse me, I went up to Lake Amador today. I was flying out a camping trip up there. So I wanted to write down the best spots close to the water. Been there a lot of times, camped there a lot of times. I just forget what, what are the best spots. Uh, water's low, really low, so it's probably not going to happen. Uh, I, just, I I don't like the water being that low where I got to walk all the way down there. You know, I like to be able to fish where I'm kind of close to where I'm camping, especially if Bishop goes to sleep in the tent. I like catfishing at night, so it uh, just makes it difficult if I have to walk really far. <clears throat> anyway, I was talking to a couple students lately, uh, and about um, the question came up about what are my favorite things in wrestling? What, like, what's the things I like to do the most? Is it training? actually wrestling, cutting promos, booking, or, or whatever. They had a, a bunch of different things. And what I told them is that what one of the favorite things that I have done or continue to do is uh, road trips. Every wrestler has road trip stories. Some you can verify, some obviously made up. But uh, everybody has road stories, man. When you go on the road with people, uh, you get to learn a lot about people. And uh, these guys, you get a, you, you build a bond. I've spent a lot of time on the road with a lot of cool ass people. Kind of you kind of get your crew together, and you just do a lot of traveling. I remember going up to Oregon a lot when I first started, and uh, I think my like original crew was like me, Choop, Cooter Boone, and Bruce, Ryan Tran. <laughs> We're going up there together, a lot of trips. And then as I kind of earned my weight up there, I started bringing up like carloads, and it was generally like. I was in charge of one car, and then Samurai was in charge of the other car. And, uh, you know, Samurai's a road warrior. He does not want to tap out. I'll, I'll usually drive from Sac to Oregon on the way back. You guys can split it up. He's a warrior. Uh, Choop's a warrior. They, they, they're both pretty good. And just recently, uh, the Pride, Gamble, and Mercedes uh, have put in a lot of road work. And they're, I, those fucking guys, though, like... They're, they're hitting like 95 home and they never get caught. So this is where I'm like, you know, I don't want to get into the race thing, but I'm just thinking like, fuck man, I, there was one time in Oregon where I was driving and I got uh, a ticket for going 10 miles too fast. And that's my first ticket I ever got in my life. These motherfuckers are going close to 100 and nothing happens. Thatcher could not drive in Portland without getting a ticket. Like every time we went up, he's, it got so bad. That when we were coming back, he'd get a ticket every time. He stopped driving on the way back because he would he would always get pulled over and get a ticket. So he stopped driving. But one of the one of the stories that I have that it gets kind of graphic in a way. But one of the first big trips I took to uh, I want to say it was like the original Battle of the Redwoods. Uh, it was up in that same town, Eureka, Eureka, whatever. It's up there. I think I think uh, Big Money Bill Monroe got us booked. And um, I was in a car with myself, Flaco Loco, uh, Bulldog Brian Raymond, and a guy named Mike Matrix. And we go to the show, we do the show, and of course I have to wrestle twice. I wrestle as Chupacabra, and then I wrestle as Big Ugly. Uh, so we do our things, and blah, blah, and we meet some people at the show, talking to fans afterwards, and, you know, these people, you know, m many girls liked Mike Matrix. If you don't know who Mike Matrix is, he's basically like uh, Johnny Morrison before Johnny Morrison was wrestling. You know, the dude was just chiseled shredded you know um thankfully there was no health and wellness back then but but i digress but so we're talking to them and they want us to go back to their their uh they have like a lodge or a house or in the mountains or something which right away was kind of red flag to me but anyways we decided to go and um then we're sitting there talking to them and then the one one of the girls uh tells uh mike that she wants to go into spa so, you know, they go and I'm, you know, leaving this guy ain't got no fucking swim shorts on, and, you know, whatever. So we're sitting there, we're, it's a huge house, a really nice house. And um, the sink's here, the window's here, the spa's on the side of the window. So the guy and his wife and some, I think somebody else was there with them on this side. They're sitting there and we're like on the island thing, our back's on the island thing, facing them. It's me, Bulldog, and Flocka, and we can see what's going on in our back. So we're just watching and talking, you know, and look over and you know the girl sitting on top of Mike and the top comes off and you know they you know, do their thing you know they got the Mike's Mike's look like a million bucks but he's dumb as a box of rocks but he 
has the you know the spotlight on still the backlight for the patios on so you can see everything's going on and, and we had been drinking and stuff so we were kind of all kind of buzzed but we we're just sitting there fucking trying not to laugh because mike's back there putting it down you know and this her friends are just chilling right here and uh, you know we're just talking and this guy starts telling us the story about one of our wrestlers <clears throat> and he starts telling us because the guy talking he's a native american so he started telling us the story about he met one of our wrestlers whose name is uh, Warpath. And that he said, man, when I when he first walked in the building, I felt his spirit. He talked to me through her spirit ghost. I felt his magic. I kept saying his magic. I felt his magic. And afterwards, I guess he went up and talked to him. And um, he, he tried to speak in, I don't know what, if it was some Native American language or something. But Ruben just like nodded because, Ruben, you know. And so the guy said, yeah, when he took my hand, I just felt total magic. We spoke to each other with our spirit, spirit ghosts or whatever the fucking gimmick was. So we're just in there talking. And then, you know, Mike's back to getting his carrot wet and um, he finishes. So they start coming out of the, the tub and we're sitting there fucking bulldogs. You know, he, at this point, the bulldog is like 18, 19 years old. So he's just fucking chuckling. Like, you know, he's like <clears throat> a little kid, like like my dad. And, and I'm just, you know, I'm going well, Flacco's Flacco, you know, so we're just sitting there chilling and. They, you know, they finally turn around and they're coming out of the pool, so they don't really see what's going on. And, you know, uh, they're walking up and then they, they kind of go back there to open the door for him because it's one of those sliding glass gimmicks. And I lean over at Flock. I'm like, isn't fucking Warpath Mexican? His name's Ruben. Isn't he Mexican? He's like, yeah, but he plays a Native American because he looked like he was Native American. So that was the character he was playing. So this fucking dude was on this magic thing and all this stuff to a, like a guy that's not even Native American. So I didn't have the heart to tell him. I, I was just like, let him believe what he wants. He had a moment. If it makes him a better person, you know what? If he now can find his spirit ghost or, what, or whatever his deal is, hey, more power to him. So Mike comes in. He's like, hey, bro, we got to leave. And I was like, dude, we're just like, you know, we haven't been here that long. And they're giving us food and drinks. And, you know, it's just chill. He said, nah, I really, I want to go. I want to back to the hotel. I'm tired. And all. So we get in the car. And we're, you know, start asking Mike questions. And we're like, hey, what's going on, bro? Why did you want to leave? Well, the girl said uh, his, uh, her husband's coming over. And I was like, oh, shit. He's like, yeah, but she tripped me out saying, but they're going to, uh, she wants to leave him. And she said she'd, she'd want to, she'd move down with me. And he's like, and I, I have to leave. She goes, we got to go. He's like, yeah, she's coming. She's coming by uh, Motel 6 tomorrow. We're staying at like Best Western or something. So he just wanted to get the fuck out of there. So anyways, you know, we, we're, we're laughing. It's a one like, well, we'll put that in the storybook and whatever. So we're, we decide, you know what, like Matrix is freaking out. He wants to just leave. So at this point, it's like 4.35 in the morning. And I'm like, well, here's the, here's the deal, man. Like, if we go to sleep now, I have the Raiders play at 10 a.m. So I have to stay to watch the game, then, which means we're not going to leave until late. But if you guys want to leave early, we got to leave now. You know, Mike's like, let's leave now. Let's go now. So it is, we decide to leave. And I'm like, I, I can't. I can maybe drive an hour. Flock was like, I got it. Stops at the store, gets one of these big-ass fucking rock stars and, like, coffee. And he just fucking down. So we're flying through the mountains, and it's foggy as shit. It's dark, and we're and Flock was flying. I'm in the back seat, and I just lean over to Bulldog. I'm like, bro, just go to sleep because if we get if we crash, we won't we won't even know. It was you fly back, and we go, you know, we go back, go about our business. And next month, SPW comes back, and Matrix comes, and we're kind of joking about it. And he's like, yeah, you know, bro, it's just. I, I didn't want to stay around, you know, because I got to go. Because I had to go to the doctor to get checked. I was like, "Well, you didn't wear a condom." And he's like, "No, no, no." He's like, "You was just spur of the moment thing," and you know, so whatever happened. So the next month he comes back. This is like two months later. He shows up. I'm like, "Hey, bro," and he's like, "What, man? What, I said, dude? I need to talk to you. We need to go outside and talk." And he's like, <clears throat> "What's going on, boy? What's going on, man?" And he's thinking like, "I'm gonna fire him or something." And like, bro, that girl from the Redwoods called me. And she's pregnant. And the look on his face was like, dude, like, he didn't know. He's fucking freaking out. He's our main event that night. And he's freaking out, panicking. Like, bro, I don't know what to tell you, man. So every every month, I would come back with another, bro, she's fucking calling, man. Like, she she wants to come down. She's following us on you know, on MySpace at the time. And she fucking wants to come. So he didn't come back the next show, right? He's fucking, he's, because I told him she was going to show up. So here we are close to nine months later. And, uh... And he had came back to show. He started coming later, you know, to, to shows and stuff. And he uh, he he comes to a show. You know, he's gonna he's ready to come to a show, and I send him uh, the sheet of what he's doing. 
and and I sent him a picture. <laughs> God, I'm such a fucking prick. I sent him a picture of this baby, and I'm like, bro. And I said, <laughs> I said, I said, hey, bro. I said, here's your, here's your daughter. And he's like, what the fuck, dude? Are you serious, bro? What fuck? What am I gonna do? He's just fucking freaking out. So he came to the show. Dude. I said, bro, I said, what are you gonna do, man? Like, you have a kid out there, dude. And I go, so I go. She says she's moving to Sacramento next month. And he just flipped out. Like he was fucking panicking, freaking out. He left, and I haven't talked to Mike to that day, to, to this day, today. So I'm assuming he thinks he still has a kid out there. Uh, and I was just working the guy. I was having fun with him. So I'm assuming he thinks he still has a kid in the fucking Redwoods. But, um, hey, keep your pants on. But, yeah, I would like to talk to him about that. See if uh, see if he, uh, if he still thinks he has a kid. Because she's got to be at least 13 years old by now, 14 years old, something like that. But uh, that that's Mike, man. That was Mike. But anyways, as you know, as those you start traveling with people, and this is why I tell students all the time, you know, if you can find a good group of people, man, you know, a couple of things benefits is it makes the driving a lot easier. You just have so much more people to work with and work against. And when if you're cool and you get a crew that travels together, when they get booked somewhere, they take you with them because they know they can trust you driving, they can trust you, you know, with payouts and everything, and, you, and then it just becomes fun and kickback. Like I said, when I first was doing my road trips, it was me, me and my students. It was like, you know, Samurai and Chupi, Virgile, Hayashi, Thatcher. Um, I'm not probably forgetting some people. Cooter Boone and, and a couple other people that that were um, Flocko, of course, that would go on the road with us. As, you know, you earn more stake, you start working bigger companies. I started traveling with like, the it was like, when I first went back to the Portland on the TV, uh, they asked me if I could bring guys up. And I said, yeah, I'll bring up Vinny, Adam. And then CJ and Bulldog. CJ, Bulldog, and Adam had been there before, and they left, and then I went there. So they were there before me, actually. So anyways, I brought all them back, and then I started traveling with, you know, the Scum, Paul Zadora, uh, Vinny, Oliver John, Thatcher, Hayashi, Virgile. Uh, so we were just taking this uh, freaking, the you know, pretty much everybody's like a legend now <laughs> that was in that group, uh, to Oregon to wrestle, and we just all rode with each other. And at this time, you know, Hayashi and Virgil were, and Timmy were just babies. They were brand new, you know, like they were really green. Uh, they were going up getting some some really good work, you know. So, um, but just traveling with all these guys, man, just you 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 start you start getting this bond with the, with these dudes, and um, and it just becomes like fun, man. And you just have so much fun on these road trips. I remember we would go, we would, we would uh, play the letter game where you would say like one person's name, and then the next. The next person I'd say has to have their first initial, the last initial of their last, or first initial of the last name. So if I say Adrian Donis, you'd have to say like Adam Cole. And then the guy, you say Adam Cole, the next guy says Chris Chetty or something, you know, whatever. I was just, you know, I mean, it got, but it got to be where people were like making up shit. Oh, he was a job guy in Memphis or something, you know. And I think the, the last one we did, it was like Oliver and me, Oliver and somebody, but Oliver says Yardy France. Because he couldn't think of a why, and we were just like, "Yeah, we're done. We, we fucking can't do this anymore." But it's just just doing that shit, you know, and just having fun with those guys. And there's a, and then with those guys, there's a ton of more things because we didn't get into staying at the hotels yet and stuff. But um, it was just uh, cool traveling with those guys, man. And I remember when we started flying up. Two, I got two stories about the flying up. I mean, we flew up one time, and uh, Adam, you know, he's the Southwest does the ticket number thing when you stand in line or whatever. So Adam showed up late, so. He's coming in behind me because I'm fucking early. So I'm like in the first, I'm in like boarding pass, like group A, number 30. Like I'm right away. So Adam comes in later and he tells the fucking, uh, the, the lady on the gimmick, the, the stewardess or flight attendant, uh, hey, it's this guy's, uh, he's a champion in Portland. And I didn't even have a belt at the time. Uh, it's his birthday. Can we sing happy birthday to him? So they fucking congratulate me on having this championship and sing happy birthday to me. And it's like this motherfucker, man. But... Right before we get on the plane, remember Hayashi's and Virgil are young. They're like been in business like a year. This is I can tell you so many stories about fucking Hayashi, man. I fucking love that kid, but this fucking kid, for some reason, he's next to me. And and if you guys don't know, like I, I told this story at Virgil's uh, funeral about Hayashi. And if you fucking know anything about me and me and Hayashi. If I'm here, Mike's getting ready to fuck something up next to me. That's just the fucking way. That's just the luck we have. So anyways, we get on there, and I say, hey, there, we're up. Grab your bag. And he's like, hey, he's like, hey, ba hey boss. Like, What's up, man? He's like, I had this dream last night that we all died in a plane crash. 
I look fucking, I'm like, fucking go to the back of the line, dude. Like, why don't, and he fucking goes to the back. His ticket's like right next to me. Do I get the, I said, why the fuck would you tell me that before we got on a plane, dude? Oh, yeah, huh? I was like, this fucking kid, man. So I made it a point. I would always tell Virgil, would you fucking watch Mike? Don't let him fucking talk to me. Or or if he, if, if Mike's going to say something, tell him that he needs to clear with you first. Because Mike would just, he just, I don't know if he was just a little intimidated or what, but he'd always try to like bond or something and then say something so fucking outlandish. I, I couldn't believe it was coming out of his mouth. But anyways, I love that kid to death. Um, but yeah, man, so I tell these kids all the time, man, if you can go on the road with, with people, man, find a good crew, get on the road, man, do your thing, man, have fun. Uh, this, this, it'll, it'll, build, it'll build you, man. And uh, like I said, there's people who have road stories that aren't true. There's people that have stories that are true. Uh, just make your own stories, man, and um, have fun, man. Like I'm saying, you're young in the business. There's no pressure going to shows. People aren't expecting you to fucking steal the, steal the show or nothing like that. Go and have fun and uh, just enjoy it, man. Enjoy it and value the people that you're with because uh, more than likely somebody in your group is going to make it big time one day. And hopefully they don't forget you and uh, they just remember <laughs> what you did for them and or just the friend you were to them when nobody else was. So anyways, man, please like, subscribe, click the bell icon, and I will talk to you soon. Boomski.